Today's video is to turn in a 10 litre water bottle into a mini greenhouse uh, which works and it propagates plants very very easily through the uh, spring through the summer. So we'll just have a little run through with what's already been done this year. We're now near the end of May. Here's some tamarisks which was uh, stuck at the end of April. Some few little dogwoods there at the back. A honeysuckle, wygella. Now wygella has got a little flower on it so it seems to be doing quite well. Hornbeam, notoriously difficult. Let's see how we go with that one. Lavender, relatively easy. Uh, purple lilac, viburnum pompon tree, Japanese maple and acer, uh, the Judas tree, uh, the beech there, which are two more difficult from cuttings, but we'll see how we go, and some hydrangea there. So through the video, I'll explain how to create the bottle into a propagator, how to fill it, how to plant so we need to get on and make the actual uh, propagator itself or the mini greenhouse. Uh, 10 litre bot 10 10 11 litre water bottle are ideal. The best ones to use are the ones that um, actually come in at the centre there, so sort of quite narrower. If you mark some lines around in two places, one on the widest section, which will create the top, and then some marks on the lowest, the, the narrowest section at the bottom. And then that will, once then by using a craft knife, by cutting round, or a pair of scissors, so please use some old ones, don't go and borrow your wife's uh, dressmaking scissors, otherwise you'll be in serious bother. And then we, what you'll end up with are two pieces, where one nicely fits over the other. Keep the cap, because that's most important. And the next job to do is to create some drainage holes in the bottom. That's very easily done by either a drill or a very hot soldering iron. If you do a soldering iron, do it outside uh, and don't breathe the fumes in. Now we need to fill the, um, fill the plastic bottle up with some soil medium for uh, getting your cuttings going. What I like to do is put a soil mixture, uh, just an ordinary soil at the bottom anything that's going to retain moisture, a bit of compost, but just really anything that's going to contain moisture at the bottom. The actual medium for the uh, cuttings is a mixture of grit sand and soil, or you can use compost as well. Um, that will keep it aerated and give the roots somewhere to, to, to find a way in. So what we'll do now is very quickly put some soil in the bottom, and what we need to do you don't need much, just enough in the base. You also need to make that and get that a really good soaking in the bottom. So really go for it. And just let that percolate down. And that will retain the moisture in the propagator itself over the next few weeks. Just let that settle down quite nicely. A little bit more in there, just to... see the water coming through the bottom there so we very well we're very well soaked there and fresh on top pat it down and that's the base all sorted and with that moisture in the bottom it'll be enough to keep it uh, keep the moisture up in the propagator over the next few weeks the next stage is to put the sandy the sand and soil mixture in on top. Be generous, bang it in, you need at least six inches in there, well three or four inches, I've not gone metric yet. Some of the large stones can come out, small stones are ideal. Just keeps it all aerated. Next job just gives that a little bit of a soaking, or shall I say dampening, not, not too wet, just nicely just nicely soaked and just let that all settle down so the best thing to do is now leave that for at least maybe an hour put the lid on and then come back to it and we'll put the cuttings in later 
Hello there, so today we're going to uh, prepare some cuttings. Uh, we're now at the end of May, pretty rainy day, so not a bad not a bad day to take cuttings, everything's hydrated. What you're looking for is some new growth, fairly flexible, nice and green, not too, well definitely not woody this time of year. And these are actually mulberry cuttings, just starting to fruit there. Um, you're looking to put at least two of the nodes under the floor, under the um, under the soil, and I just take him above the last node there. Any bits of leaves you don't want. Sometimes it's beneficial to leave leave the leaves on, but sometimes not. And some cuttings benefit from being straight at the bottom there, just get rid of that layer. To, um, so they can take the moisture up and hopefully make the roots. <coughs> and we'll get another, maybe two more cuttings out of here. Go one, two, three, just above the fourth node. Take the bottom one off. Just clip that one off. We don't need the third one. And then this one we can leave just a few leaves on. Maybe cut that one in half. And again, just nicely straight break that area off into the water, to keep them hydrated so you're ready to uh, put them in the uh, propagator. And can we make another one? I think we can. Let's just take that one off there. That's number two node. Take that one off. Take the little bit off at the end and just clip it off there. Yes, I think <coughs> we've got one there. Scrape it in and into the water. And now it's time to put the cuttings in. So what we need to do, very simply, push the cuttings down at least two nodes into the, into the soil, or the sandy soil mixture. Fairly easy. Goes nicely in. If there is a problem pressing them in, you can always make a hole with a Gibbler, as they call it, or a uh, chopstick, which I find absolutely ideal. Push them down. You want to at least remember at least two nodes under the under the in the soil. Very simply, just till you've got the whole thing filled up. These um, propagators can take up to probably 20 cuttings. You can be fairly close together. You don't have to have them spaced out. The more you put in, the more humidity is created, and the more chance they've got of taking. Now this will be never a short term fix. It normally takes, if you're ready to pop these on, probably about six months. So you have to be very, very patient. And in that time, what you need to do is make sure they're always hydrated. So if it's very, very hot in the daytime, uh, just go along with the mister from the evening and in the morning as well, and that will just keep it, keep them hydrated. Do not water the soil, because that will probably make the roots, actually what little roots are, uh, are made will be rotting. So really they don't need very wet soil. All they need is the moisture which they'll gain from the leaves within the propagator itself. And that's all there is to it. Don't forget the label. You might remember what they are now, but you certainly won't in six months' time. On goes the lid. And that is where they'll stay. And what, we, what you'll find out by this evening, you'll see moisture all in that dome there and that's enough to keep these cuttings hydrated till they get the roots going and all we do now is pop that down into the area with the rest and just keep an eye on them now we have the cuttings in the uh, in the propagator we put it back in put it down in the position along with all the rest of them the lids are on the caps are on and that's where they'll stay for the next at least six months here we are inside the polytunnel 
which I find is the best place to keep them. Uh, the soil keeps warm and the roots will take hold hopefully very very quickly. You notice some shading on there on the back that just stops the sunlight directly hitting them. So these things must be kept warm but out of direct sunshine. Um, anywhere uh, in your garden's good, shady area, but they must be kept warm. And as you can see, odd ones have got the caps off. Now that's when they're starting to root and you need to get them used to the outside atmosphere. The next stage will leave a few weeks with the cap off and then completely take the top part off and then they'll be ready for transplanting maybe in three or four weeks time after that. I'll just leave you now with just a little bit of a small area of the garden. Here we have a few shrubs growing which has all been done from cuttings some this year, some six or seven years ago. Anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me.